Pepito. Pagui still at ten. Hey there, you're watching the Adventure Travel Family. We're the Akimbue family, and adventure travel is our love language. In each of our videos, we hope to bring you all along while sharing tips on how you can also create your own adventures around the world or in your own backyard. We've learned that adventure favors the curious. We'd love it if you would subscribe, like, and share this video, and then go Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Adventure Travel Family. Our family spent 48 hours in Luxor, Egypt. It was so surreal and has quickly become one of our family's favorite locations in the world that we've been to. In this video, we'll show you our exquisite accommodations and six experiences and activities that must go on your bucket list when in Luxor. We were actually in Egypt for a week and spent the majority of our time in Cairo. If you haven't seen our Cairo video yet, we included a link here as well as below in the description, so feel free to check that out. When we were planning our week-long trip to Egypt, we honestly wondered if leaving Cairo to visit Luxor for 48 hours was worth it. We took a one-hour flight with Egypt Air from Cairo International Airport to Luxor. On the flight, we were able to take in the beautiful desert views, as well as see the historic River Nile and its impact on the landscape. The Nile, which is the longest river in the world, originates in Sudan, which is south of Egypt, and flows northward through Egypt into the Mediterranean Sea. The 20 minute taxi ride from the Luxor Airport to the Luxor Hilton Resort and Spa where we stayed was entertaining as our driver flexed his English with tour guide facts. How often does the rainfall here? Once, once a year. Really? Yeah. Wow. Once or twice a year for like half an hour, one hour maximum. The Luxor Hilton Resort and Spa feels like a desert oasis located right on the banks of the Nile. It is amongst the best located and scenic hotels we have ever stayed in as you have views of the Valley of the Kings in the background. The hotel has a beautiful and well thought out outdoor layout with three pools, one of which is for adults only. Given the desert summer heat, we can almost guarantee that you will end up in one of those pools. We stayed in adjoining rooms that were spacious and each had their own bathroom. Our room had a garden view, though you can also get a room with a pool view. The complimentary buffet breakfast is what you'd expect from a Hilton hotel with lots of fresh fruit options. We love that fresh fruits are accessible and considered a staple in the region. They also have menus if you prefer to order room service or eat by the pool. Luxor, formerly the largest city in the world and once known as Thebes, was the former capital of Egypt. It is divided into the east and west bank by the River Nile. Since the sun rises in the east, the east bank is called the land of the living. This is the side of the river where people live and work and the majority of hotels, restaurants and temples are. The west side is known as the land of the dead. Since the sun sets on the west bank, it became the area where the pharaoh's tombs and temples were built. We spent our first 24 hours in Luxor exploring the West Bank. 
On our way to the Valley of the Kings, we stopped at the Colossi of Memnon, which are two massive stone statues of Pharaoh Amenhotep III, built in 1350 BC. The Colossi of Memnon is one of Luxor's best photo spots, making it the first location to add to your Luxor bucket list. Ashraf told us that they were constructed as guardians for Amenhotep III's mortuary complex behind them. The stones used making these statues were carved in Cairo, and it's theorized that they were transported 420 miles over land to Luxor, as they would have been too heavy to be transported over the Nile. The second must-see location in Luxor is the Temple of Queen Hatshepsut, or as Ashraf helped us remember it, Queen Hot Chicken Soup. Her burial temple is immaculate and straight out of a storybook. Queen Hatshepsut was the only female pharaoh in ancient Egypt, and her rule was a period of peace for the country. Her face on statues has a beard, and she is clothed as a warrior, which she did as to make her look more masculine and equal to previous ruling pharaohs. It was easy to feel like Indiana Jones when we visited the Valley of the Kings. Upon arrival, you are welcomed by the awe-inspiring desert mountain scenery. The entire tomb complex has 63 tombs for various pharaohs. A certain number of tombs are open for tours at any given time in the year. We visited the tombs of Ramses VI, Ramses IX, and Merneptah. Each tomb was covered in Egyptian hieroglyphics and had a similar layout. A long corridor, which connected with various rooms where treasures and mummy sarcophagi were once housed. The tomb guards allowed us to enter some of the roped off areas, usually for a tip. The famous tomb of King Tut was closed for preservation at the time we visited. Ashraf told us that the longer the reign of a pharaoh, the longer their tomb would be. Also, the tombs would sometimes take right or left turns. This is because there are so many built into the valley that on occasion, while excavating, one tomb would run into another tomb and would have to be diverted elsewhere. Sadly, a lot of the tombs were looted immediately after the pharaoh's mummy was entombed there, mostly by the priests and others who officiated in the burial ceremony and therefore knew where the tomb was. On our way back to our hotel on the east bank, we stopped at a local shop where vases and figurines made of alabaster stone are made and sold. We were given turns in making alabaster pots and bought some items as a keepsake of our trip. Truth be told, we were supposed to tour the East Bank the same day, but between jet lag and walking in the heat after an already very early morning flight, the kids couldn't keep their eyes open. Ashram was so kind to return us to our hotel and resume the tour of the East Bank the next day. After a great night's sleep, we were picked up from our hotel around 4 a.m to go hot air ballooning. After a short ride in a bus with other tourists, we crossed the East Bank to the West Bank by boat and arrived at the launch site. The temperature at 4 a.m. was a cool 82 Fahrenheit or 28 Celsius. Flying over the Valley of the Kings and Queens is like something from a National Geographic show, completely breathtaking.
The landscape is a beautiful contrast of the desert terrain, meeting the lush areas by the banks of the Nile. We were on the hot air balloon for over 45 minutes, going as high as 500 meters or 1,650 feet and experienced the spectacular morning sunrise. The balloon operator provided details about monuments and locations we flew over, and the landing was a smooth one. We spent the remaining 24 hours on the East Bank visiting the two major temples, the Karnak and Luxor temples. The Temple of Karnak is the second most visited historical site in Egypt, behind the Giza Pyramid Complex near Cairo. It is immaculate, consisting of four main parts, of which only the largest is currently open to the general public. Ashraf told us that it was built over a period of 1600 years and started around 2000 BC. Each ruling pharaoh would build upon their predecessors' existing work as they considered the temple the house of their god and not the house of the pharaoh. It was mainly used as a central place of worship to the Egyptian god Amun-Re. One famous aspect of the Temple of Karnak is the Great Hypostyle Hall. This area spans over 50,000 square feet with 134 massive columns arranged in 16 rows. 122 of these columns are 33 feet tall and the other 12 are 69 feet tall with a diameter of almost 10 feet. Ashraf is an Egyptologist, so he was so knowledgeable and made the tour as educational and engaging as possible. Also, we have a second name like this, another city here. This is a basket of fruit. Basket of fruit, it means ka, or in Arabic we say ka. Ka or ka, this is a lion. It means L, and this is E, L, E. You can read it also. You can see ka lili or ka lili. Ka lili in Israel. It's in Israel, in the south of Jerusalem. So ka lili and elud. We have these two names. This is the name, as I told you, for the city or for the village. It was conquered by the king Tothmode III. Tothmode III, he was very proud. So they started to bring the slaves as a seen from... Ashraf showed us that the Karnak temple has an outer court, inner court, and a designated Holy of Holies, where only the chief priest and pharaoh entered for rituals. Ashraf also told us how Queen Hatshepsut's successors built around her obelisk as they tried to minimize her accomplishments. However, their structures served as reinforcements and fell while protecting her obelisk after a major earthquake shook the region. Lastly, we went to the Luxor Temple, which is connected to the Karnak Temple by the Avenue of Sphinxes. The Luxor Temple is located closer to the Nile and experienced major flooding. Ashraf told us of restoration efforts in recent years by UNESCO to preserve the temple. After they cut all the columns, he also mentioned that his people's beliefs in the Egyptian gods diminished. The temple became living quarters for many. Nobody from the Egyptian people still today believe in the ancient Egyptian religions. Okay. So people, they forgot about their gods, about their civilizations, about their goddesses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, they start to use temples like a house. Mm -hmm. Many families, cooking. they were living in such temples, sleeping in such temples, cooking, washing their clothes, so sometimes they face some holes to hang the clothes. Sometimes see the wall like this, it was color black because of the smoke. All six of these incredible experiences we shared are reason enough to put Luxor on your adventure travel bucket list. 
Like I said at the beginning of this video, when we were planning our week-long trip to Egypt, we wondered if leaving Cairo to visit Luxor for 48 hours was worth it. We can confidently tell you it was. Our only regret was spending only 48 hours and we plan on coming back, but next time for a much longer stay. If you'd like to watch other adventures we've shared, just click that video right there to watch our most recent adventure. If you haven't already, subscribe and turn on notifications. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Adventure Travel Family. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.